I personally come from a background in 3D CAD that is parametric based, which means uh, whatever you put into the program that uh, gets stored in a feature tree. And that feature tree becomes a history of the model that you're designing. And you can then go back into that history, update a dimension, for example, and then that should have a knock-on effect throughout the rest of the model and everything should update accordingly if it's been built properly. And then looking at something on the iPad, which is more of a push-pull type of deal, um, I didn't know how much I would actually be able to use it for design work and manufacturing work. After a little bit of a mind shift change, I realized that Shaper 3D is the real deal. I've used it on design projects and the most recent one that I've used it on is my new Gantry Encore Lite, which was predominantly designed in Shaper 3D. Gantry is a company that 3D prints its lights and works with designers all around the world who submit their ideas and the lights get turned into real products. So this isn't uh, an in theory project or a personal project that hasn't made it to market. This Gantry light is actually going on sale and can be purchased in the US and in Canada. So for Shaper 3D to have an involvement in that and allow me to be able to sketch so freely has really helped with that project as a whole. The way that I've been using Shaper 3D in particular in that project was almost like a 3D sketchbook. So I've got some files on the iPad here that we can go through. So you can see here that I've actually got an Encore on my desk and it's, I think, quite poetic to be able to put it next to all of the CAD files that progressed and through all of the iterations finally became this design. So I've got a really early file open here and you can see as we scroll around that uh, it had a lot of different iterations before it finally became this design. But you can see that I've already got the ripples in the design in the CAD software that I'm really interested in overall. There's a little bit of a background to the Encore Light. It's inspired by theatres and the drama of waiting for a performance. And I wanted to portray theatre curtains in the design. So with these really early designs, I was really being quite literal with the pleats of the curtains running around the lampshade. Later on in the design, I realized I wanted to be a little bit more abstract. But to begin with, you can see that all I'm doing essentially is extrudes and lofts. And with different types of sketches, it's been really easy and really quick to design and iterate a lamp like this. What's really interesting is, as we're just looking through some of these designs is there's a real sense of notebook uh, in, in the process that I'm doing. So every document that I've got is almost like a new page in a sketchbook, exactly the same way that it would work if I was just sketching on paper. So for example, we can see as I open up this file, um, by this point, I'm really starting to hone in on the design for this light. And again, it's just really simple extrusions and lofts, and it really helps with uh, being able to iterate so fast. So for example, I know that I ended up shortening the curtain aspect of the light, the shade. So all I would do in this design to change that would be to come in here, select the face that it's on, and then let's zoom out so I can see how much I'm pushing and pulling. And let's say, for example, uh, I'm going to move it to about there. And that already looks a lot closer to the final design that I ended up using just by pulling and pushing certain elements. So I'm an industrial designer by trade, which means I design products to be manufactured in the real world. But one of my hobbies is actually rendering and product rendering and interior rendering to be specific. So the workflow of this is going to be essentially building the whole room in Shaper 3D and then importing it into a program called Keyshot. Keyshot is the rendering engine which allows me to add materials and lighting and really makes the scene come to life. So it's super easy to sketch uh, something like a box. That's essentially what a room is. Then I can just extrude it and we have ourselves a room. Then we can go in and maybe, I don't know, change the window shapes or 
add cuts in for doors and things like that. But essentially with the iPad, I can have split screen view to get some inspiration and I can model based on those views. And finally, the last project that I want to talk about is my bespoke glasses that were handmade in Scotland by Banton Frameworks. Now Banton Frameworks contacted me and asked me to design a pair of glasses that I wanted to own. Um, for me, who's worn glasses all of my life, it was an amazing project to be a part of and they gave me complete creative freedom when it came to designing the frames. I actually have a whole YouTube series based on how I designed the frames, how I use Adobe Illustrator to refine them, how I brought that data into Shaper 3D uh, to actually model them up in 3D. So if you wanna go and find out the whole process, that is available on my channel as well. But I do just want to show you how easy it is uh, to make a pair of glasses in Shaper 3D. All I was doing was importing the overall silhouette from Illustrator and from then I could extrude the glasses like this, just using this import extrude tool. And then it was just about cutting away different profiles, adding in something like the, uh, the nose piece here. And then all I was doing was sending this data off to Bantam Frameworks where they were then hand making the glasses frames. What was also really useful as well was being able to change the color of each component in the glasses, just so I could really try and visualize the colors and materials that were being used in the end. And again, I'm always trying to get everything into Keyshot as fast as possible. I love to render things out and make them look really real. So to be able to get all of this data, export it into Keyshot super quickly, and get some really realistic visualizations, it was amazing to me to see how these glasses would turn out in the end. So considering I was an avid parametric modeler and I only tried Shaper 3D just to see what all the fuss was about, I think I've been fully converted into using this in every single project that I do. Don't get me wrong, there's still a time and a place for parametric modeling and feature trees, but to get ideas out really quickly, to be able to tweak them on the fly and change something really specific about a model without worrying about what it's going to affect further on in the feature tree or the tree breaks entirely and the whole model breaks, Shaper 3D can really help with me iterating really quickly and really effectively. So this has just been a few projects that I've been working on recently. I hope that you found it useful. If you want to know more about my design process, you can check me out over on Instagram and YouTube at Sam Does Design. And I can't thank Shaper 3D enough for making such an amazing modeling app that I can take on the go.